And bringing us back into the swing of things is playwright and raconteur. He teaches at the University of British Columbia. He is also one of our city's well-established arts reporters and theater critics for the Calgary Herald. Please welcome to the stage, Stephen Hunt. Hi. So in, in my uh, line of work, I get to see and hear and digest a lot of stories. And when I was reading about the origins of this event, I found out it was originally created to talk about um, design. And so I thought I'd talk about the design of storytelling and how it's changing. And it matters to talk about the way stories are changing because stories teach us. Stories make us laugh. Uh, whether we're a company or a political party or an online dating profile, stories are how we connect to other people. Stories heal us. Uh, stories change us. Here's one that changed me. It's 1991 and I'm a wannabe playwright living in New York and I'm on a road trip to New Orleans to go to Mardi Gras with four other people in a small car. And we're standing, we're on the side of the road having one of those pit stops you take when you're on a long drive and one of my, the people I'm with is Shu. She's a hat designer from Taiwan who lives in New York. And she announces to us at the pit stop that she reads people's palms and predicts your life. And she's gonna give us each a palm reading. So one by one, she goes through each person and predicts their life. And then she gets to mine and she just looks at me for about five seconds and then she goes, you have no lifeline. <laughs> what? What does that mean? And she goes, it means you have a short life. In short, but interesting. Which made me want to go to New Orleans even more. <laughs> but the way stories are being told is changing. It's uh, jam comes out of the way we cross disciplines. And right now, like we just had Downstage Theater did Rihanna Boy, a play that was done online. So instead of being going to see the performance, you logged on to see it. Theater Junction has plays where contemporary dance breaks out in the middle of it. It's becoming a big jam of disciplines that, that uh, are changing the way we tell stories to each other. And here in Calgary, we have had One Yellow Rabbit doing it for 30 years. So in a way, we kind of have a, a leg up on the new storytelling. I guess what's different about it is that we have new media speeding up and evolving the whole process. Um, so, uh, I totally forgot to where I'm going. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to New Orleans. <laughs> oh yeah, when I started writing this 10 days ago, the story of Alberta got completely rewritten in the interim, you know, and it started with the NDP taking that election and it reminded me of what politicians do, which is they try to come up with a story and that story here had always been that the conservatives were the, what, the, play, the safe landing place for average voters. And they tried to label the other parties extremists and it worked in 2012. And then this time they totally, the NDP turned it on its head with the hashtag extremists thing and they changed the whole story of the election in a Twitter minute. Um, we define reality from stories, not the other way around. For me, New York was invented in my head by Woody Allen's movies, and so much so that I decided that was my reality, and I, and I decided that my story was going to include living in New York City, and I did. I ended up living there for eight years. And uh, it wasn't as popular as a Woody Allen movie, but it did have a few Gershwin moments. <laughs> this is John Ware reimagined. It's Calgary playwright Cheryl Fago's story about the cowboy legend, and she wrote it. It was about growing up as a black girl in Calgary in the 1960s and feeling isolated, and she found out about this black cowboy, and she kind of turned his story of his life as settling Alberta into her own superpower. 
This is The Lost Voyage of Donald Crowhurst. It's from Ghost River Theater. It's about a, a British guy who tries to circumnavigate the globe. He kind of does that always follow your dreams thing. And he abandons his four children and his wife and he ends up cheating on the trip and then dying. So don't always follow your dreams. <laughs> This is Thomas Yu, he's a, he's a Calgary dentist by day and a, and a classical pianist by night who's played Carnegie Hall and Jack Singer Hall. And to my mind, he's the perfect blend of, of fantasy and reality. Bodies can tell as much of a story as words. So can images, so can sound and light and even location. Um, there's, this, there's a play that just closed called Shortcut to Nirvana that was just set in a yoga, it was in, produced in a yoga studio in Calgary so that, so that they've also done By Swallow a Bicycle and they've also produced a play in a coffee shop. And, but when you take the story out of a conventional venue, it completely changes the experience and it attracts different people to what you're selling too. So it's a good way to touch base with new audiences. Uh, new storytelling has changed our idea of heroes and villains. Now we have, we have uh, anti-heroes who are likably despicable and bad guys you can't help but in, help enjoying. Uh, and I just saw Age of Ultron and I couldn't even distinguish sometimes. <laughs> I run marathons. And there's nothing like the distance between 30 and 40K in a marathon to test the idea of the power of a story because your body's telling you one thing and your legs are telling you one thing and in your head you have to come up with a story that tells you something different. So at the end of the day, whether you're a company or whether you're a political party or whether you're a person or a writer trying to sell it, you better have a good one. <laughs> Because ultimately, your story is all you have. Thank you.